Hey everybody, I've got a perfect example here uh, doing some electricity. I've got a 1995 Honda Accord. It's a two door car. Cruise control don't work. I won't figure out why it don't work. All right, let's get to it. All right, first thing, we're gonna get us a schematic for the cruise control circuit for my car. Now, if you notice, I've went on here and I've traced it. Uh, very important part, being able to trace the current flow on an electrical schematic. That way, this over here, this box would be my, uh, my cruise control module, the computer. So all these inputs coming in, um, we, we've got to know what they're doing. Are they power, are they ground? You know, what, what are they? Um, some of these, if you notice, I've got them. This this brake input here goes through the brake switch right here in the middle. And if you see, it's got power coming from a fuse coming along. It goes into the brake switch. And the way that works, you notice one, it's got two switches in the brake switch. It's two parts to it. One switch is going to allow power to go through when it's when the pedal is not depressed. And then this other one's gonna go on to our brake lights. And in fact, in this one, it actually is going down to our, uh, it's a brake switch input. So when we hit the switch, that wire there, number four pin, green and white, that wire would light up with, with power. The switch would close, that would send the power on down. And as you know, with cruise control, that's gonna cut off the cruise control automatically. But this one input here, this one, whenever we are not pressing the brake, it's gonna have 12 volts over here. That's letting the computer know that we're not pressing the brake. We've gotta have that input in order to have cruise control. And if you notice some of these others over here, I've marked it uh, as 12 volts when you push the resume button. So if you follow this circuit over here, this is my resume button, my set button, and they both work the same way. It's got power fed down to them. When I hit that button on this wire here, which is the number six pin, I should have power on that. Same as with the set button, but it's gonna be on pin number, it's gonna be the wire right above that, pin number five. Uh, we've got another direct line that comes in to number 13, that's straight power to the module. And then we've got a ground. There's also another ground up here. This ground, if you notice, is going through the transmission switch. The only connections is gonna be in D4, D3, and two. It connects the ground. So when we put our car in D4, D3, or two, that's gonna allow that ground to go to the computer. So if you notice, I've wrote on here that this has got a 12 volt bias voltage. That voltage is coming from the computer. Whenever we put it into gear, that's when that wire is gonna have zero volts on it. So if you notice it's 12 volt bias voltage until put into gear. It's zero volts when it's in drive or D4, D3 and two. So let's go ahead and get to it. Let's look at where we're gonna be testing here. I wanted to do this because it was kind of uh, wasn't too difficult. If you notice this module right here in front of us, I got a T pin in there. That is going to be our connector. And if we go over a little bit more, right there is my brake switch. So we can do a lot of testing right here. And the set button, of course, is up on the steering wheel. We can test it. I'm gonna go ahead and get some connections hooked up. We'll uh, figure out which one we're gonna test first. So real quick check, let's check this right here, our input. Could be that the car is not seeing that I'm in D4 or drive, D3 or two. In that case, uh, it would not allow the cruise control to work. So I am tied in to the number 14 pin. It's that pink wire. And we can look right here. I know it's kind of hard to see, but you can see the pink wire there. I've got a T-pin in there. Whenever, 
if we look at the voltmeter, my gear shifts right up there. I'm gonna put it in the gear here in a second. So when I'm in neutral, that's the bias voltage I was talking about. Now it's a little bit less than 12, but that's the bias voltage. Whenever I put this in the D4, I'm just gonna slide it back one time. Notice the voltage just went away. That's very close to zero. That's a millivolt reading. If I put it back into dry or neutral, we're gonna get a voltage again. Let's put it in reverse. We should still have that same voltage. Let's go back to D3. All right, you see that voltage went away now. That's pretty close to zero. That's a little bit closer to zero. But in all three of those positions, I'm down near zero volts. So the, that computer knows that we're in gear right now. When I say gear, I'm saying I'm in drive. That's the only time the cruise control will work. If I go all the way down to D1, notice we got the voltage back. So let's go back. Just like I mentioned, it only has connection in three of those slots. All right, so we'll check another one. All right, I'm in pin number six. It's a green wire here. I'll get my clamp on there. And the way this one works, the back of our diagram, it's gonna feed 12 volts down to our switch. Whenever we hit that button, that is gonna give us power over here at our computer. So if you notice, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the button up here and I'm just gonna hold you on the, on the voltmeter. If I hit that button, there you go. Notice it went to 10.4 volts. My battery voltage could be getting a little low. I might have a dead battery when we get done. That's all the more reason to hook up a battery maintainer when you're doing tests like this. So there you see the voltage again. Every time I hit the button, the voltage will change. We might get this a little bit closer so you can actually see me hitting the button. Hit the button, that button, 10.48 volts, 10.47. So it sees that signal. The computer knows that I hit that button whenever I do that. That knows that in that case, I'm hitting the resume button. If I was hitting the set button, it's gonna do the same thing. And it, the computer knows, hey, he, he's wanting to set the cruise control. Now, if we go, let's go ahead and go. Let's run over here. Let's go back to the pink pin here. Or the, no, it's actually green, I'm sorry. It's the one right above the pink one. We'll get my light back up here so we can see a little better. All right, we got the light up here now. We're gonna go into this green wire next to the pink one with my T-pin. I'm not damaging the connector or anything. Just sliding in right next to the pin, to the terminal. All right, I'm on that wire now. That wire should have voltage. Notice we do have voltage there. So that's one of the power inputs. If we go, what I want to do now, let's look at this brake input. We need to make sure we're getting power to the brake. And then when the brake is released, we should be getting power all the way to the number two pin. It's a gray wire. Let's go ahead and go to that wire. That wire is up at the top up here. That gray wire, if you notice, there's a brown wire in the top right corner there of the connector. There's a brown, there's a gray, and there's a black. Those are my colors right there. I need that gray wire. So I'm gonna take my T-pin and I'm gonna go in right next to it. and I'm going to get my clip on it. Now this should have power on it. If you notice, I don't have power on it. So what we need to do, I think I found my problem there. I need to take 
and make sure that I'm getting connection. Let's go back to our schematic here. So I am not getting power there on the number two pin. I need to make sure that it's going through the brake switch. I need to make sure it's getting to the brake switch. So what I did, I actually ended up piercing the wire. If we look up in there, let's see how good we can get it to focus, if any. Let's see if I can get the light stuck in there, maybe. All right, so I'm going on that connector right there in the middle of the screen. I know it's hard to see. Let's see if we can zoom in a minute. And it's not gonna get too clear. Maybe there a little bit. There we go. So you can see I've actually already pierced that wire. I can't get to it to back probe it. So the gray wire is coming out of it. The green wire is coming into it. Let me go ahead and, let me go ahead and get on that wire. I'll be back in just a minute. All right. Had a little bit of hateful time trying to get into it there, but as you see, I've got my little piercing probe. I've got the green wire pierced. It's not damaging the wire, just touching the wire. I can I can take some electrical tape and go over that uh, whenever I get done to kind of cover that hole up. In some cases, we have to use that. I know some people's going to throw a fit over that, say that I broke the wire, tore it up, whatever, but not going to um, as you notice right now we do have voltage on that wire uh, one thing we can do real quick we do want to load that circuit just to make sure you know we're not losing the voltage uh, we can hit the brake pedal notice it went down a little bit but we're still getting 11.92 volts hit it again so that means that wire is not too bad. We're at least getting the 12 volts to the switch. I will try. What I need to do now is I need to go into the, the gray wire. The gray wire that we were just on over here at the cruise control. I need to go that same gray wire is right there. Now give me a minute to try to get this hooked up. All right, so I got on that gray wire. I'm pierced into it there. Notice we just got a millivolt reading here. So that that should be conducting, without the brake pedal push, that should be conducting that 12 volts. As possible, I might not be on the wire, but if I hit it, it does change a little bit. So that's kind of a clue that I am at least on the wire. That's not just ghost voltage. So I do believe I have found my problem. That's the only input that I don't have that's not working correctly. In this case, the switch could be bad. Maybe that, can, that one circuit on the brake switch there is bad. Now my brake lights do work. That's a, another part of the switch. There's two switches in there if you remember. What I'm gonna do, there could be a uh, problem with the adjustment on the brake switch. Maybe it's not at the right setting. Um, so I'm gonna try to maybe readjust the brake switch to make sure that's not my problem. It's either that or the brake switch is bad. So if you notice, I'm on my gray wire this time. I did readjust it. Look at what we got now. I know it's jumping around a little bit there. There could still be some problems with the brake switch, but I do believe we might have cruise control. That is what it was missing. I did adjust the switch. I actually got the voltage to come in. Uh, it appears to be jumping around a little bit. So the way that works, like we mentioned, I should be able to hit the pedal. It goes away. Notice it go away let off it should jump back up there we go so i do believe we just had a misadjusted brake switch no parts required how you like that if it don't work i'll make another video where we change the brake switch out but i think today might be my lucky day sorry about the poor video quality 
I wanted to at least go over this though. All right, so one, one other part of the circuit I wanted to talk about is this guy right here. My vehicle speed input. We got we got to have an input there. I'm pretty sure I know that input works now. Um, it's on an orange wire right here. And what that is, is whenever, it's actually a pull down circuit. So we're at five volts. When the wheel spins, there's a sensor. As the teeth go by, it will bring that circuit down to zero volts. The computer can interpret that. If you know, the uh, computer speaks binary language. So high voltage, low voltage, the computer can interpret that and determine how fast we're going. The faster we go, the faster these little humps will happen. The frequency will change. It would have more frequency. So we can start out going slow and then it's gonna get faster and faster. And the computer can determine how fast we're going from those up down that square wave. Some of them are AC generators. Uh, they will generate their own voltage. Those are usually a two wire. They're gonna generate their own voltage. And a three wire, which I have, we usually call that a Hall Effect sensor. That's gonna be digital. That tells you it's gonna be a square wave also. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Leave your comments, good or bad. You ain't gonna hurt my feelings. I like to answer the questions. Hope y'all have a good day. All right, we're gonna find out if we fixed it or not. We'll see if a cruise will work. Some cars, you can't set the cruise below 25 mile an hour or something. We're up at 40, I think we're all right. Let's hit that button. We're hoping for a light to come on the dash. And there it is. Right now, I'm on cruise control. I've let off the gas. I know we're rolling downhill, but that light on that dash right there, the green light right above my ABS light, which I gotta figure out next, figure out what's going on with it. But that cruise control, I'm still not hitting the brake. Or hitting the gas, rather. Uh, it's pulling itself. Staying about 45 mile an hour there. We can go ahead, uh, usually hit the brake to make that light go out. There it goes. Then we fixed the cruise control. Good job. Thanks for watching.